Well, thank you, thank you, and uh, to to all of you as well. Uh, one thing just to mention at the top: Secretary Kerry is in Panama City today. This morning, he held bilateral meetings with Canadian Foreign Minister Nicholson, Mexican Foreign Minister Mead, and Vatican, sorry, Foreign Secretary Mead, and Vatican Secretary of State Cardinal Parolin. The Secretary also participated in President Obama's meeting with Panamanian President Varela, and he returns to Washington tonight. Last night, of course, as, uh, as you know, the Secretary met with Cuban Foreign Minister Rodriguez. You may have seen the note we sent around on that uh, meeting, uh, which took place uh, rather late uh, last night. So, Matt. I, I'm going to defer to Arshad for the first question. Okay, Arshad. Um, can we, uh, do you have any reaction to the Pakistani judicial system's decision to free on bail uh, Zakir Rahman uh, Lakvi, who is one of the people alleged to have helped plot the 2008 uh, attack uh, in Bombay? Yes. We are gravely concerned about the release on bail of alleged Mumbai attack mastermind uh, Zaki or Rahman Lakvi. We have communicated that concern to senior Pakistani officials over the course of many months and as recently as yesterday. Terrorist attacks are an assault on the collective safety and security of all countries. Pakistan has pledged its cooperation in bringing the perpetrators, financiers, and sponsors of the Mumbai terrorist attacks to justice. And we urge Pakistan to follow through on that commitment to ensure justice for the 166 innocent people, including six Americans, who lost their lives. Um, who communicated that concern as recently as yesterday? Was it the ambassador? Uh, I, would, I, I believe it was in Islamabad. I would have to check to see whether it was the ambassador. Um, so I, I can look for that detail. Uh, yes, uh, go ahead, Tijinder. Will, will this be just the words to tell them that you, know, you are supposed to, like pledge them, you're supposed to, we are giving them quite a bit of a deal on defense uh, equipment. Uh, will there be any repercussions of this? Well, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to speculate about, uh, about consequences or repercussions uh, from the podium, um, but I think I've made clear that, uh, that we're, we're, again, as I said, gravely concerned about this development. If there are no teeth to your great concern, if there are no consequences that are possible, then why should the Pakistanis um, uh, take your grave concern seriously? Well, I would just, uh, again, say that this uh, has just happened uh, in the last few hours. Uh, so, of course, we're going to, uh, to look at this development uh, and, and decide uh, what, uh, what consequences to draw from it. But uh, I'm not going to get ahead of, uh, ahead of that process. Just, just to, it, it's not just the Mumbai attacks. It's the six Americans uh, died. And as President Obama has repeatedly said, that anywhere, wherever even one uh, American is lost, we will hunt them down. And uh, uh, it doesn't look like, uh, as Arshad says, there's no teeth. And so, um, where do we head from here? Like, in other countries, when we're dealing with other countries, we immediately talk about sanctions, we talk about, you know, so when can we see any teeth or anything more in, you say that it's 24 hours. So, what about maybe 48 hours, one week? I'm not going to put a time on it, uh, timeline on it to, to gender, but uh, certainly bringing the perpetrators of the, of the Mumbai uh, terrorist attacks to justice is, uh, is a key priority, um, and we stand, uh, we stand by that. So uh, we'll continue working in that direction, but I don't have any further uh, specific uh, steps to outline right now. Well, wait, when you yes, said Matt. we will look at this development and decide what consequences there will be, does that mean that there will be consequences, or do you uh, decide I'm, what, what I'm if to any What I'm trying to indicate is that this, is, this development has just happened, okay. so of course we're going to look at it, and, uh, uh, but I'm not, I'm not trying to foreshadow uh, any specific um, steps. Uh, we've got to well, look at this and decide. Um, decide forget about, what, uh, forget about specific do. steps. How about any steps? Are well, you saying there will be, got, or is that, we've got, is that? That's what we've got to consider. I don't, uh, I'm not trying to say that there, uh, that there necessarily will be. So it's a decide result. what, if any, consequences there will be. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, new topic? <coughs> sure. So, I know there's going to be some briefings uh, next week on the Hill uh, for members here. Uh, there have been some members of Congress who have been very critical of the, uh, uh, of the tentative framework here. Uh, Pete Roskam, in particular, said, quote, they have kept members of Congress entirely in the dark, his words. 
how do you respond to those criticisms, particularly from the right, who uh, who aren't pleased with this arrangement and what's been coming forth uh, to keep them apprised of what's happening? Well, we've had unprecedented uh, levels of, uh, of cooperation, consultation, and briefings with Congress throughout the, the, the entire process of the nuclear negotiations with Iran. So we have uh, made uh, people available for testimony. We've had meetings. We've had phone calls. Uh, this has been uh, a central part of, uh, of our approach to the, to the talks, is making sure that uh, people in Congress are up to speed um, on the status. And, and indeed, since the, uh, uh, the framework understanding was reached uh, in Lausanne, to reach out uh, as well. Uh, I mentioned yesterday that the, the Secretary and Under Secretary Sherman uh, and others are keeping in touch. Um, the Secretary has made uh, several phone calls to, uh, to, the, um, to members of Congress. Under Secretary Sherman uh, briefed Senators uh, Schumer and Cotton yesterday. And uh, we remain uh, in contact. In fact, we've offered uh, e even this week for Under Secretary Sherman to, uh, to talk with, uh, with members. So uh, this will continue next week as well, uh, when uh, we anticipate that the Secretary will brief Congress. The exact timing and scheduling of that is still taking shape. So I don't have scheduling details to announce, but uh, this, is, uh, this, has, this has been what we've been doing, and it's what we're going to continue doing. What do you, what do you think spurs that? Granted, this is, you think that's coming from people who are just opposed uh, to this? And again, this is criticism coming from the right. Well, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to, uh, to try to ascribe uh, motivation to, uh, to people who are uh, being critical. I would just reiterate that we have made it a point to, uh, to be in touch with members of Congress and, uh, and indeed, in re as recently as this week after the conclusion of the framework agreement, to, uh, to, to offer uh, to meet and discuss the details, and that will continue next week as well. This, this briefing yesterday <clears throat> with uh, Under Secretary Sherman and Senator Schumer and Cotton. <clears throat> Excuse me. Those were separate. Um, it wasn't uh, so. It was a, a phone call that Under Secretary Sherman had with uh, Senator Schumer, uh, and then she had a meeting with Senator Cotton in person. Yes. So were they the only two that took took you guys up on the offer for yesterday? Uh, well, we've made we've we've offered, uh, and those are the those are the people who have okay. uh, taken the offer. Do you have any more of a readout about the um, no the in person I, I, meeting between Under Secretary Sherman and Senator Cotton? No, no, I don't. Uh, I don't have any further details to read out. And, and but they, it was at their request after you offered, or did she reach out to both these Again, two? Again, we've in we've particular? we've made clear that uh, Under Secretary Sherman was uh, was prepared uh, to to talk with members of Congress, um, and as I understand it, they uh, uh, they took well, up that offer. I'm sure we'll ask the senator Senator Cotton's office how what his impression of the meeting was. Mm -hmm. You don't want to offer us what, uh, offer us uh, the State Department's well, view of the meeting. I mean, it, this building and the White House were extremely critical of Senator Cotton's letter to the Iranian leadership. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering, you know, how this meeting went. Do you think you've won him over on this? Well, I, I'll, I'll let him uh, speak for himself, but uh, the, uh, certainly the, uh, it was a, an opportunity to talk about uh, the understanding uh, that we it reached was, and why it, we consider it uh, uh, a, uh, an important uh, start uh, on the way to the joint comprehensive plan of action that we aspire to conclude by June. You can't say that the meeting was cordial or Friendly, I, I don't have like that, that level of detail. I'm not trying to hide something. Uh, I just, I just okay. don't, I just don't know. I didn't take right. a barometer well, if of, you the, can, of the meeting. If you can find yeah. out, it would be interesting to know. Yeah. Okay. Was it a full and frank discussion? Again, I don't have, a, I don't have a characterization. Not because I'm trying to hide one. I just, yeah, no. I just don't. Uh, uh, I believe it happened here. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, yes, uh, Michelle. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, excuse the step. Okay. I, I just wanted to. I mean, have you? Do you know if there's been any conversation um, at the? Under Secretary Sherman level or negotiator level, with the Iranians about the divergent narratives that have emerged from Lausanne in, mm -hmm. in any attempt to get, you know, in any event to make sense of what are um, almost diametrically opposed accounts of what was agreed or not agreed to. Well, I'm not aware of, of, of any direct uh, contact with the Iranians uh, in the last uh, couple of days about that topic. Um, again, I, we, we, uh, we stand by uh, the, uh, the information uh, that we uh, right. have circulated. I would also point out that I believe that our, our German counterparts uh, made a similar um, a comment uh, today uh, in, in a press briefing uh, that they did uh, about the question. 
uh, of sanctions relief. Um, so, uh, you know, the the substance of what we have shared uh, publicly uh, and, uh, and and our fact sheet. Uh, again, we stand uh, we stand by that. Um, yes, Michel. Egypt. Uh, yes. The news is for. Um, with your indulgence, no, no Michelle, we'll stay, stay on Iran no, no. with Pam, and then we'll and then we'll come back to you. Can I get yes. your reaction to Iran's acceptance into the Chinese-led AIIB, um, in particular with both China and Iran being part of the ongoing nuclear negotiations? Does this type of relationship um, pose a risk, first of all, of destabilizing the talks? No, we don't see uh, we don't see such uh, such a risk. Uh, the the P5 plus one have remained united in our goal of preventing Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon, and we expect that to remain the case regardless of other, uh, of other outside events. What about the um, sanctions that are imposed on Iran? Um, could Iran's um, affiliation with this bank um, have an impact on the international sanctions against the regime? We do not expect that, that Iranian membership in the AIIB would have any effect on the international sanctions regime that's in place uh, on Iran. Okay, Michelle. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, a news report has said that the State Department approved uh, the selling of uh, Hellfire missiles to Egypt in addition to training and logistical support worth some $57 million. Uh, is it accurate and uh, when the delivery has or will happen? On Tuesday, the State Department notified Congress of a potential sale of Hellfire munitions to support Egypt's efforts in countering a terrorism threat that the country faces, particularly um, in the Sinai. Uh, so uh, no sale has been concluded yet. Uh, this was a notification of a potential sale as required by law. Mm -hmm. And uh, when do you expect this to happen? The delivery. Well, again, we have uh, we have a it's a potential sale, so the sale has not been concluded yet. So I think it's premature to speculate about uh, delivery. Mm -hmm. But this is the this is the step uh, where we are in the process. We have done the notification to Congress um, that has a particular time period associated with it. After that, uh, a sale could be concluded, um, and then after that, we would uh, there would be uh, you know it'd be possible to talk more about delivery uh, schedules. But we're not we're not at that point yet. Is this the, the kind of potential sale that until the White House made its decision last week would have been uh, on, on military assistance that would have would have not been able to have ha would not have been able to have happened or would not be able to happen? Well, this is part of our counterterrorism cooperation with Egypt um, and as, as you uh, point out, the administration decided to lift the executive holds right. on the delivery of certain weapon systems yeah. um, and will continue to request uh, 1.3 billion in annual military assistance for Egypt. So this uh, falls under that. Uh, so in other uh, words, prior to last week or whenever it was that they made that, this sale could not have had, or potential sale would not be. Well, it would have gone under, it would have, you know, there was a process in place. Um, so. Um, so yes, this is uh, this, this is able to go forward following the administration's decision. Yeah, um, new topic. Laura, can I get a feedback? Sure. Um, first of all, I know you didn't have much on this yesterday, but do you have anything more on what the State Department's recommendation was with regard to the um, state sponsor of terror designation for Cuba? Well. As, as we discussed yesterday, uh, I'm, I'm not going to talk about the content of the State Department's recommendation, which was, uh, which was sent over to the White House. Uh, the President yesterday outlined uh, where, uh, where that stood uh, from, from the White House perspective now that they've received the State Department recommendation. Um, and I think the President also pointed out uh, that, uh, you know, that he's, uh, he's not going to talk about uh, the, uh, uh, the recommendation or his decision because um, it's, it's with the White House for, uh, for their review and for him to decide. So I'm not going to get into the, ta the, the content of it. Did this come up, can you say, in uh, Secretary Kerry's meeting with his Cuban counterpart? Um, can you say anything about what message he might have had on that? Well, uh, the meeting between Secretary Kerry and the Cuban Foreign Minister, uh, Rodriguez, uh, it was lengthy. It was very constructive uh, in our view. Um, they, they both agreed that we would continue to work uh, on outstanding issues, but uh, I don't have further detail to share from, from the discussion. Um, can I go to 
Venezuela then? Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, go ahead. I mean, uh, uh, I think the, the readout that you gave, well, I get you right, you said it was very constructive. So uh, how was it constructive? And was it constructive toward the formal restoration of diplomatic ties? Was it constructive toward uh, the potential removal of Cuba from the U.S. state sponsors of the terrorism list? Was it constructive in terms of uh, Cuba uh, adhering to the kinds of human rights standards that the United States would like to see? Was it constructive on any of those things? Well, I, I appreciate the opportunity to break it down, but uh, I'm not going to get into more uh, detail about uh, which particular areas uh, and, and to evaluate uh, each of the component parts. Of course, we are embarked upon um, a, uh, you know, the negotiations on the one hand to reestablish the diplomatic relations uh, and uh, open embassies uh, in our respective capitals. Um, and there are a number of other dialogues that have been happening uh, over the last few weeks, uh, including um, talks uh, re related to human rights, talks related to communications, um, to maritime issues, uh, migration. So uh, you know, those are all parts of the, uh, uh, the discussions we're having with Cuba as a result of the president's policy change. But I don't have uh, you know, can you more detail on Can you say whether yesterday's talks yesterday. covered all those topics? Uh, I'm not in a position to outline every uh, you know, whether every single one of those was touched on. Um, I could see if there's more uh, information to share. Um, so you wanted to switch to Venezuela? Yeah, if no one else has anything. Go ahead. Yep. Um, do you have any further readout of Tom Shannon's trip? Um, did he meet with President Maduro while in Venezuela? Anything you can tell us on that? Councillor Shannon met uh, on April 8th with Venezuelan President uh, Maduro. Uh, it was a productive exchange, and the United States welcomed the opportunity for direct dialogue. From our point of view, we believe it's in the interest of both countries to work together where we can, while we recognize that we will continue to have differences. Um, and uh, so we uh, have said also repeatedly that we are open to direct engagement with Venezuelan officials, and it was in that, uh, uh, you know, in that um, connection that uh, the meeting happened. Uh, so that's uh, uh, that's the readout I've got on uh, the, um, on the meeting. Issue of sanctions come up during this meeting, and in what way? Um, well, the uh, again the, the the meeting happened uh, at the invitation uh, of the Venezuelan uh, side uh, to to send an official to talk with President Maduro. Uh, among uh, the uh, the discussion among the topics uh, they discussed included human rights and democracy concerns. Uh, from uh, from our side, uh, I don't have uh, I don't have further uh, detail uh, on uh, uh, on whether the sanctions issue was raised. Uh, I would uh, you know, refer you to the Venezuelan mm -hmm. side if they want to characterize uh, how they uh, how they addressed that if they did. Do you know if there are any plans for any in, uh, U.S. Venezuelan interaction in Panama? Uh, there are no bilateral meetings uh, planned. Of course, it's a big multilateral summit, um, but it's not. Uh, there's there's no. Uh, there are no sit-down bilats or other kinds of meetings uh, planned. Yes, Abby. Did the issue of Venezuela come up in the discussion with the Cuban foreign minister and secretary? Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I put that in the same category as Arshad's question. I'll check and see if there's uh, more to say about that. Uh, yes, Pam. Yemen. Yemen. Yes. The um, Council on American Islamic Relations and the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee say they filed a lawsuit against Secretary Kerry and also Secretary Carter for what they say is the U.S. government's inaction in evacuating U.S. citizens from Yemen. Um, from this podium, um, you all have previously said that the State Department has been alerting U.S. citizens on opportunities to leave the country. Um, so with that in mind, what is your reaction to this lawsuit? Well, let me separate this into two pieces, if I could. On the one hand, uh, there, uh, you're right, uh, there was uh, an, a filing um, in, uh, uh, yesterday. And as is customary, we're not going to comment on the particulars of, uh, of an ongoing uh, litigation. But on the other hand, uh, there, you, you've, you've touched on the question of evacuation of American citizens. And uh, also, uh, I think it's worth pointing out that uh, back on April 3rd, um, we, that was our most recent update to our travel warning. But for more than 15 years, the State Department has been advising U.S. citizens to defer travel to Yemen, and we've been advising those U.S. citizens who are in Yemen to depart. So I think it's important to keep that uh, in mind uh, in, 
uh, you know, we've, we've been, this has been our consistent position um, going back into the 1990s um, that uh, we uh, advise people not to travel to Yemen, that is U.S. citizens, uh, and those who are there to leave. Now, with respect to the particular details uh, and the advice we've been giving to American citizens who do happen to be in Yemen, uh, we have been uh, updating on almost a daily basis uh, with the options that uh, exist for people to leave if they, if they choose. Um, there was, uh, you, you, uh, you may recall over the last few days, uh, we've talked about uh, there, there were um, flights and, um, and also ships from uh, India, uh, as well as from uh, Djibouti. Uh, it's our understanding that now the governments of Djibouti and India have suspended their evacuation efforts, um, and we also understand that the government of India has closed its embassy in Sana'a. Uh, there, uh, there are um, still uh, attempts by the International Organization for Migration, the IOM, to organize flights out of Sana'a and we continue to provide updates to American citizens uh, about, about those uh, opportunities and about any other uh, opportunities that, uh, that exist for people to leave. Your, the, the part of the response that says, your response that says for more than 15 years we've been telling Americans not to go and telling Americans who are there that they should leave sounds an awful lot like you're saying it's your own fault that you're there. If you're stupid enough to go or stupid enough to stay, your government isn't going to have any responsibility for uh, helping you out. Am I correct? No, Is that the no, right? I'm not. Well, uh, why even mention that then? I mean, people well, are there. Some of them may not have had a choice in going there, um, and now they're looking for help from their government. Right, uh, and uh, and you're basically so telling them to. <laughs> Continue. Finish fill your sentence. In the, fill, in the, fill, in the, fill in the blank. Um, um, well, no, I would. I would. Uh, no. I, well, okay. What are you doing for them? I think I've just uh, d dis uh, discussed with. No, uh, that's not true. That's not. That's not. Uh, that's you not told accurate. them to go to India. I told, told them to get on the Indian boat or the Djibouti there boat. There are a number of American citizens but, but who, now, who have taken advantage right, of those opportunities. Right, but now those are no longer options. Well, some of them. I, I, as I said, the the IOM continues uh, to to try to arrange uh, flights uh, out of Sanaa. Uh, so we're keeping Americans updated about about those efforts. Okay, um, so, but it sounds as though you don't have any uh, any. Uh, you don't have a particularly, uh, you don't have any sympathy or much sympathy at all for American citizens who are stuck in in, in, a, in a war zone. No, no, we're doing everything we can to, to help them uh, to help them find ways Short ways of to leave. Doing anything. Um, no, again, I, I, I disagree with you. What, what you're well, saying. What, what, what you mean by doing something? I think, Matt. But what, tell me what what do you mean by doing something? You something mean something other than uh, some? I don't know. Doing something I think would mean something other than putting out a notice that says, hey. There's a ship to Djibouti, and uh, I mean, the U.S. government itself is doing nothing other than telling people, "Hey, here's an op here's a potential option for you to get out if you can make your way to the port at Aden uh, and get on a ship that's run that, that uh, on an Indian ship, which is now no longer an option." Well, we are uh, un you know, unfortunately in a situation where uh, you know, access to Yemen is extremely difficult. Uh, and to to do so with with U.S. Uh, government assets could put other lives uh, at risk, oh, right. um, and and so we are doing the best I with right. the, in the in the circumstances no. as I, they exist. I don't think anyone's debating. I, I don't, yeah. No one's taking issue with that. Mm -hmm. That's just just fact. But the idea that you're actually doing something seems not to be borne out by the facts because it doesn't look like you're doing anything at all other than telling people, hey, here was a way you could have gotten out three days ago, but it's no longer available. Well, no, I think that's unfair because we've been telling people in advance of, of well, opportunities. Well, you've also We're been not telling, telling them for 15 the years not to go there and that it's essentially their own fault that they find themselves in this situation. Well, and sorry, We're not suggesting that anybody is at fault. Um, I'm simply pointing out that, right. uh, that, that for a long time the advice has been not, I, not to travel. I know, I know that you don't or can't talk about pending... The, the, the lawsuit, yeah. but I'm just wondering, is this something that, in general, can the government be compelled by a court? In, 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 is there any precedent for uh, private groups going to a court mm -hmm. demanding that the uh, demanding that a court order uh, an evacuation or something similar? Is this something that it falls solely within the executive's purview to do, or is it something that a court can order. 
Well, I, I can't speak on behalf of the court. I can check with our with our uh, legal folks and see if if we're aware of any such precedent. Um, I I don't have that information in front yeah, of me. I'm just wondering if there I if you can be if the if the executive, meaning the State Department and the Pentagon, can be compelled to carry out a what essentially is going to be a military operation, although non combat, but to carry out a, a, an operation that would involve sending. Mm -hmm. uh, troops or government personnel into harm's way to rescue people, if that's, if, if that's even allowable. Right. No, I understand the question. Uh, it, it's, it's quite possible that an answer to that question would, would essentially be a comment on an ongoing litigation, but I'm happy to, to talk with well, our legal team. Well, you're not aware of it ever having team. happened in the past, are you? Uh, I'm not aware of, but I also haven't researched the question, so I'm happy to ask um, uh, our, our legal experts whether they know more about that. Um, quick yes, Tajinder, go ahead. Uh, I had asked um, earlier, and um, Murray, I think, didn't have uh, the number of Americans who were evacuated by the Indian Indians. Do you have a number now? Like how many people? Uh, well, we're not we're not giving out uh, public numbers uh, of people who have yeah. taken advantage of these opportunities. We are certainly aware of uh, of some American citizens who have uh, who have left um, by a variety of means um, uh, because there have been several of our partners uh, who have offered uh, to help in, in transporting Americans. Um, and we certainly appreciate uh, those, uh, uh, those offers to cooperate uh, and, and assist. Um, so, but we don't, we're, not, uh, we're not giving out numbers uh, about this. All right. Question about Libya. Yes. So, you know, four years ago, there was a lot of uh, push, certainly by the State Department, uh, for the uh, end of Gaddafi's regime there. And now there are, you know, 12 plus ISIS training camps uh, set up there. With that push from the State Department, do you think that the folks in Libya are better off now uh, than what was happening when uh, when Gaddafi was there, considering the influence of ISIS in Libya now? Well, you 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 start uh, you point out that uh, of course, you know, under the Gaddafi regime, the Libyan people uh, suffered tremendously, and the Libyan people uh, rose up uh, in opposition to that uh, to that regime. And uh, the response of the Gaddafi uh, regime was uh, to, uh, to brutally uh, suppress the, uh, the expressions of, Lib of Libyan people for, uh, for freedom and for a greater say. Um, and uh, so that was, uh, that was a, an uprising that came from, uh, from inside Libya. And in response to that, of course, the, there, was, there was support from the international community to prevent um, those, kinds of, uh, those kinds of atrocities. And, of course, and now uh, there is uh, still a long, a long road to go. The situation in Libya is not uh, is, is not uh, a uh, an easy one. Um, but I think uh, also, if uh, if you were to ask, uh, uh, and if you look at the situation in Libya um, compared to the Gaddafi regime, uh, and if you ask Libyans, um, you know, I, th I, th I think uh, you know, that would be uh, for them to to voice. We certainly, uh, you know, have been supporting the Libyan people. Uh, and we will continue to support the Libyan people. Uh, we have, uh, we remain engaged uh, with people on the ground, also with the with the UN, uh, to promote a uh, a peaceful uh, political process. Uh, there have been some talks recently. There's still a lot more to do, uh, and we'll continue to uh, support that. Process. And I guess the follow, I guess the follow up on that then is so. Uh, uh, is the ISIS threat because of the you know the effort to try to move something through Congress to try to engage the United States militarily there, with having that influence of ISIS on the ground mm -hmm. there. You know, did that make things you know better? Is there a different type of threat? I'm not going to draw comparisons to to those situations, but of course we're we're deeply concerned about the threat from terrorist groups uh, in Libya, uh, including from ISIL affiliated groups uh, who have expanded uh, presence in Libya uh, because of the absence of a strong united central government. Um, and and so uh, you know, again, what this comes back to is uh, that. You know, the ongoing um, escalation of, of violence uh, against Libya points out the need for a political solution, and that's what we're working to, to try to help bring about. Samir. Yeah. Yes. There is a report that the delegation from the Libyan parliament coming next week to Washington to ask the State Department and Congress for arms and support. Do you have anything on this? Uh, there, there are reports uh, that the, that the Libyan uh, Parliament is going to be uh, uh, making a visit here. I can confirm that a delegation from the Libyan House of Representatives will be in Washington next week. The Libyan Embassy here is arranging uh, their visit, uh, so I think they would have more details about the the specific um, elements on their uh, on their itinerary. 
We look forward uh, to discussing uh, their work with the, the UN Special Representative, uh, Leon, uh, in support of the UN-led process uh, to constitute a national unity government. Do you know with whom they will meet here? Uh, I don't have uh, that detail. We'll uh, we'll see if uh, if we have anything uh, uh, on the schedule that we uh, that we can we can tell you. Thank you. Yep. Um, yes, uh, on on the right, and then we'll come to you. Go ahead. Uh, this is Zepato Yammer. I'm with the Duke Kishin for Okinawa newspaper. I would like asking to the um, the Futemur relocation issue, and U.S. and the Jap Japanese government did uh, the. Uh, agreed to return to Denmark in, in April 12, 1996. And it's uh, 19 years are already passing, but uh, Denmark isn't, um, did, uh, have not uh, returned yet. How do you think about the take so long time to that this uh, issue is not solved? Well, we remain committed to, to construction of the Futenma replacement uh, facility. We are working with the Japanese uh, authorities uh, in that regard. Uh, and, of course, this is uh, an issue on which our Department of Defense uh, colleagues are in the lead since it's a, uh, a military facility. Um, but, uh, but we certainly uh, are, are continue to work with, uh, with our Japanese counterparts uh, toward, uh, toward that end. Um, yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I know the North Korean uh, nuclear <coughs> excuse me, uh, issue is uh, totally different uh, than uh, Iran, but does the U.S. have any uh, schedule to uh, nuclear negotiation with uh, North Korea near future, and some that sometimes this year or other? Well, our position on six-party talks uh, yeah. hasn't yeah. changed, uh, as we've made clear for a long time. In, in, in conjunction and consultation with our partners uh, and allies. Uh, we remain open to dialogue with the DPRK with the aim of returning to credible and authentic negotiations uh, on the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. But the burden is on North Korea to take meaningful actions toward denuclearization and to refrain from provocations. So that's where we stand. It's where we've been uh, for a while, uh, unfortunately, and our position on that hasn't changed. What does authentic mean? Well, uh, I, I think what, what we mean by that is we, uh, the point is not to have talks about uh, talks, it's to have negotiations on, um, uh, on denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, to return to the, the, the heart of uh, the issues that uh, the six-party talks uh, should be uh, dealing with. Do you think the six-party talks will help um, denuclearization in the Korean Peninsula. I don't that's think the international that's framework. That's what we're. Uh, that's well, what it we're doesn't working. work. Yeah. So for a long years. Well, it's, this is uh, again. This uh, it's 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 on uh, the Korea the North Korean uh, side to to take steps uh, to show a readiness to return to meaningful negotiations. Uh, yes, did you know? raised by Matt. Um, there's a, the Council on American Islamic Relations (CAIR) along with two other uh, organizations, have already filed a lawsuit against yes. Secretary of State John yes. Kerry. So this question, right, so that's what Pam was also oh. uh, uh, so asking no, do, about do, in that follow-up. Do you up. have any any update on that? Well, I, as, as I said, we're not going to comment on, oh, on okay. an ongoing uh, okay. litigation. We talk more generally, though, about the evacuation questions. Uh, I have a follow-up yes. to a question I asked yesterday about sure. Bahrain. Mm -hmm. um, the answer to the, the question uh, about Nabil Rajab. Uh, yes. You said that um, you urged the government of Bahrain to drop these charges, and the question has arisen, are you seeking the government to drop the charge, all of the charges he faces, just the new ones, just or just the old ones, or both sets? Right. So let, let me uh, just uh, – so there are, there are two different sets uh, of charges here. First, um, there was an April 5 – court date uh, that had been set for N Nabil Rajab, and that was uh, for his appeal of prior charges. That hearing was postponed. And in addition, there was an April 2nd uh, arrest uh, of, of him. He was arrested on April 2nd. He had been out on bail. Um, and those were on new charges related to posting of information on social media. Um, we are deeply concerned by the arrest, and we urge the government of Bahrain to drop those charges, that is, both the case for which he was supposed to have an April 5th hearing that was postponed, and, and the new charges um, on April 2nd. So the short answer to your question is yes, both. 
rate. Thank you. Yes. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.